uh, the, because if this was 30, uh, then this would be the times 70, and that would be the difference. So we have this number here and this number here. These are going to be the sales on credit. The assumption that we're going to make is that the sales on credit are going to be collected in the following month. So if we made it on credit in July, we're going to collect the money in August. Again, that's an assumption we're making in this problem. Uh, the problem will have to give you an assumption. In real life, we'd have to know what the assumptions are. The assumptions can be very simplified or they can be very complex. We could assume that we're going to get paid in multiple months uh, per after the sales date. But in this case, we're going to assume that any sales made in one month is going to be collected in the following month. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the total cash receipts from customers using what we just calculated the cash budget uh, piece up here. This isn't the total cash budget, but it's part of our calculation we just looked at. So we got the current month's sales. That's what we're bringing down. Here's the current month's sales on cash. That's the cash sales. And then we're going to figure out the collections of receivables. So we're going to try to figure out how much cash we're receiving. For July, we're going to say that everything that we had in receivables, which we're assuming happened last month, June, is going to be collected the next month. That's the assumption that